Okay, this is MathLinks 9, section 8.1 on solving one-step equations. We're going to start at question 5, sorry, question 4, uh, and it's a modeling question. And it says, write an equation that is represented by the model shown. It says, three paper clips is equal to 27 cents. So we're really asked here is, what is the value of each of those paper clips if three of the paper clips is equal to 27 cents? So if X is going to represent a paper clip, right? A a paper clip, excuse me, then 3 multiplied by the value of the paper clip is going to be equal to 27 cents. Now, some of you might have just used uh, 27 without the decimal, but technically what it wants you to do in this particular chapter is get accustomed to using decimal amounts uh, as values. So we have three paper clips, or three x's is equal to 27. To isolate the value, we're going to divide both sides by 3, and then therefore x is equal to 0 0.09. So therefore, each paper clip would be worth 9 cents. Question 5 says, model the solution to 4x equals 3 quarters. So it says using a number line, and I guess we said we didn't have to do this one, didn't we? I said you skip 5. We'll skip 5. We'll come back to it. Uh, we'll start at question 7, actually, because we did 6 already as well. So here we have solve each question. <clears throat> now, A is giving us an equation where the variable is on the left-hand side. So if I was to give a an easier version of this without fractions, and I said uh, a quarter of x is equal to 2, we would know that we would multiply both sides by 4 to get the answer, right? And we would get x isolated, and we'd have 8 as the answer. The only difference between these two is that we have a fractional value. So, so here we're going to multiply both sides by 4 first. I'm going to write the question down. So I'm going to have multiply both sides by 4 and by doing that you end up getting just x but over here if I take the 3 quarters and multiply it by 4 I'm going to consider that 4 to be 4 over 1 and you can do one of two things multiply the numerators to get 12 multiply the denominators to get 4 and then reduce it down to finally 3 and you get x equals 3 alternatively you could of course have cross reduced it and if you did cross reduce you would have gotten the answer of 3 right off the bat. So multiplying both sides by 4, I get the answer of 3. Oops, I made a mistake. All right. Pretend that whole thing didn't exist, and we'll just go on to question number B. Just pretend that was a 4, and then everything would be fine. Uh, question B, we have 2y. 2y equals, that's the world's worst y, 2y equals negative 6 fifths. Now, notice when I took this negative sign that was in front of the fraction, I have a habit of always keeping my negative symbol in the numerator, and I find it works best if I do that. So it's it's how I express negative fractions. I always keep it in the numerator when we're dealing with algebra or in the denominator if I'm isolating. So in this particular one, I'm going to divide by 2, and I'm going to get y. But when I divide by 2 over here, I need to consider the fact that it's going to be multiplying by the reciprocal of 2. So dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. So I'm going to multiply this by a half. And when I do so, I first look to see if I can cross-reduce. Is there any opportunity for cross-reduction? Yes, there is. The negative 6 over 2, both can be divided by 2. I can divide both by 2 to give me negative 3 over 1 instead of negative 6 over 2. That's the lowest terms for negative 6 over 2. And once I do that, I'm going to multiply my numerators. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 5 times 1 is 5. So therefore, my answer is y is equal to negative 3 fifths. For question C, we have negative 7 sixths is equal to. Uh, now, this here is a coefficient of negative 4 thirds n. So I know that whatever coefficient I have, if I divide by that coefficient, so for example, think of an easier question. If it was 4 equals 2x, I would divide both sides by whatever the coefficient is to get rid of it. So that idea, that basic premise, also occurs here. I'm going to divide by negative 4 thirds to get rid of the multiplying by 4 thirds. Now pay attention. I have to divide this side by negative 4 thirds as well, but the order in which I place my terms is important. I have to keep my negative 7 sixths here, and I have to divide it by negative 4 thirds. I can't switch them. 
because 10 divided by 2 and 2 divided by 10 is not the same thing. So therefore, negative 7 6 divided by negative 4 thirds is not the same thing as negative 4 thirds divided by 7 6. So I'm dividing both sides by uh, negative 4 thirds. I'm going to keep the first fraction and change the multiplication by the reciprocal. Uh, check to see if you can cross reduce. If I had negative 3 over 6, I'm going to think of that as being negative 3 over 6. What would that reduce down to? Both would be divisible by 3. And I would get negative 1 over 2. Right? So now that I have that, I can then say, well, n is isolated over here because n's by itself. Uh, negative 7 times negative 1 is just 7. 2 times 4 is 8. And therefore, n is equal to 7 eighths. And your last question, D, uh, has a coefficient, again, of a mixed fraction. So taking an easier question, just making up different variables, if this was the question, we would still divide both sides by 4 to isolate the variable. So the same thing would be true, except I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and 2 thirds to get rid of the multiply by 2 and 2 thirds. And I'm going to divide this by 2 and 2 thirds. So on this side, because I've... Uh, done the opposite operation. I have isolated the variable. Here I have to divide these two fractions. I'm going to change them both into improper. I'm then going to change it to keep the first fraction and multiply by the reciprocal. Check for cross reduction. 3 over 6 will reduce down to 1 over 2. 7 over 8 is already lowest terms. So when I multiply the numerators, I get 7. Multiply the denominators, I get 16. If you didn't, you get 21 over 48 which some might assume is lowest terms, but it's not because both are divisible by 3 to give you 7 sixteenths.